Okay. So chapter nine done. Now we're on chapter twelve. So now we're gonna deal with some liabilities. Liabilities in bonds. Okay. First off, we have consider the following new payable transactions. Generalize transactions and consider the given transaction only. Okay. So, purchase equipment costing eighty thousand by issuing a five-year eight percent note payable. The note requires annual principal payments of sixteen thousand plus interest each October first of the year. Okay. So the first thing that we have going on is, of course, the recognition of the notes. So this is purchasing equipment and credit notes payable for the amount of notes. Okay. And that's purchasing our equipment. Check our answer. We are good. Number two, we're going to include interest on the note payable. Okay, so we need to calculate interest on December 31st. First off, since this is a note and we're paying, it's a debit to interest expense and credit to interest payable. Now, calculating the interest in itself, you take the principal, multiply it by the interest times the fraction of the year. Again, we start in October. That's October 1st. So we take October plus November plus December. We have three divided by twelve. So this is in months. So our crude interest is sixteen hundred. One thousand hundred. And this is recognized a crude interest. Check. We're good. Paid the first installment on the note. Okay. So, this note requires annual payments of 1600 plus our interest. So, first thing is our principal, which is always a debit because we pay the other credit. So we're reducing it by that principal payment of sixteen hundred. Okay. We're also going to reduce interest payable. Why? Right? Because this is part of the first installment. Okay. Then we're going to debit interest expense. You have to figure out the interest expense for the year or for 2019, that's October, which, of course, that'll be 80,000 times our rate, which was 8%, 0.8, times now for the remaining months, which is 9 divided by 12. So we have additional 4,800. That's the amount of interest that we recognize for the first installment uh, payment for our expense. So add them all together. We come out that our cash payment is 22,400. Okay. 
and this is paid the first installment due. Okay. So this is a regular note payable or note that we have. So we're pretty much good on those. So include interest on the note payable. Now the interest should change. So it's again now we only have a certain amount of principal left. Like how we try to keep tripping it up. So eighty thousand was our original note. It has now decreased to sixteen thousand. Okay. So we're now at sixty four thousand times point zero eight times Three divided by twelve. So only thing changed in our formula is basically what's remaining of the note. So interest expense, interest payable, and it's now twelve eighty. And again, we figure as long as the note is going down, interest will also go down itself. Alright, the total liabilities of Carol's video production on December 31st, 2019 are... Ooh, well, total liabilities right now should be 64000 which was the new principal, plus 1280 or interest payable. That should be 65 to 80. That's it. That's question one. Oh, that was a doozy. One that question two is going to be mortgage. It is. Okay. Question two. We have kill company. We purchased a building and land with a fair market value of Four hundred and fifty thousand. Three hundred thousand for the building, one hundred and fifty thousand for the land. On January first, twenty eighteen, Kill signed a twenty year seven percent mortgage payable. Okay. Kill will make monthly payments of three thousand four eighty eight point eighty five down to two decimal places. And they're not requiring explanation. Cool. The first thing is to record the mortgage. So we have building and we have land because it bought two assets and then of course the payable. And getting cash on this one. So the building was three hundred thousand. Land was one hundred and fifty thousand and the mortgage payable was basically combined four hundred and fifty thousand. Nothing more. Insurance are pretty much straightforward. Whatever we've done. Hey. Okay. Now I want you to actually prepare an amortization schedule. So starting off first, we start with the beginning of the note, four hundred and fifty thousand. So oh, it's monthly payment. Sweet. So four hundred and fifty thousand is our beginning. Now, we're supposed to make monthly payments of 3,488. 3,488.85. That is our total payment. Okay. Problem is, is we have to figure out how much goes to principal and how much goes to interest. Okay. So, calculator. We take four hundred thousand 
times no, no, not four hundred. It's four hundred and fifty. Okay. Four hundred and fifty thousand times seven percent. That's not going to come out because that's an annual. So this is a little bit more interesting how it goes. That's monthly. We're going to have to figure out how much is a month on interest. So 7% times monthly. So basically 1 divided by 12. That's going to be interesting. We'll see if this works. Because usually we don't do it monthly because it's a little bit tougher. All right. $2,625. That actually seems about right for a mortgage. I'm going to go ahead and flow through one. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you got to do. 7% divided by 12. I get a per month. And then times it by you getting balance is monthly, sometimes posting off. Principal payment is 3488.85 three, eight, 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 minus our interest 863.85. That's how much went to principal, which again seems about right for a mortgage. So 450000 now gets principal payment paid off. So we're at 449,136.15, I think. Okay, so now that's your beginning. And we're going to do the same thing. Now, that 7.07, 7, the interest divided by 12, and multiply it by 449, 136.15. Remember, it says round to the two decimal places. So this is going to be 2,619.96. Yep. Same process. You take the payment minus now uh, two six one nine point nine six. So our principal is eight six eight point eight nine. Okay. And four nine one three six one five minus eight six eight point eight nine. Visas with mortgage at the end of two years of 448-267.26. Hey, I can not transfer numbers. There we go. Check. There's our amortization schedule. Okay. A little bit tough to get it. Especially since it's monthly, but just remember, take your interest rate and just divide by 12. You're good. Now we generalize our payments. So, first off, mortgage payable, since that's what we're paying, is a mortgage. Interest expense. We get the principal payment. After we calculate the interest and the interest portion, you subtract that from the total payment. So that's how you figure out the principal payment. Okay? 
First thing is always figure out interest, then subtract it from total payment. All right. Once, once you've got the amortization chart down, it really is just following the blanks. So the principal payments are the one that states up there. We'll go to mortgage payable, interest, which we've already calculated, up there. And then we always pay the cash of the total payment, which, again, that was given to us as our monthly payment, just like we would if you're paying car. And now it tells us to generalize the second. Same thing. General entry does not change. Orange payable. Interest expense. And then cash. Now put in their information. So 868.89. For principal payment, interest is there, and then cash is uh, 8.85, actually does not change. And there we go. That's the morning point. Now, I think that was the bit of the notes. I think now it's just going to go with the bonds. Yeah. So this again is the bulk. You're probably going to see more Probably a bond on the exam, which again, do the practice problems, because they're exactly like you, what you're seeing on the exam. All it is is different values. Okay? So, exactly what's on the exam. So, we have uh, 90,000 dollar bond of 10 years. 5%. Okay. Cost company pays interest each January 1st and July 1st. So again, we have uh, semi-annual and amortizes this sell our premium by straight line amortization method. Okay. Company can issue its bonds payable under various conditions. All right, we know that. So, first off, we're going to generalize the issue of the bond and first semi-annual interest payment, assuming bonds were issued at base value. We have six parts, so we're probably going to go through each discount and premium. But first off, issuing of the bond is on base value is exactly the cost. So 90,000. And we don't have an explanation. I'll have to worry about those. Okay. And then record interest. Okay. So interest is interest expense. And cash, and we always use the percentage that's tied in with the bond. So 90,000 times 0 0.05. Okay. Now remember, we have two payments going on. So we have to take this number and divide by two for 2,250. And an extra two somewhere. There we go. And that's face value. Face value is the easy one. Now, here we go. We have a discount. And the reason why I see it as a discount is that it was issued below 100. So, if I know my journal entries, or if you know them, you know you're going to have to calculate a discount that is below. First off, bonds payable, again, is always the face value. Whatever it was issued, 
only cash and discount we have to figure. Well, to figure out cash, take 90,000 times whatever rate it's being sold at. So this is 0.91, or 91%. So basically, I sold this bond at eighty-one thousand nine hundred. Okay. Next, we take the difference, and that will come out to our discount. So eight thousand one hundred. Okay. Check. We're good. Okay. Next, we're going to do the payment of semi-annual interest. Okay. We have to watch out here because we do know we debit interest expense. And we're going credit cash. But we're also going credit discount on bonds payable. We have to amortize. Now, since it's the same bond, we don't have to recalculate cash. Cash is going to be the same as face value. That's a nice little trick there. It's giving you all three scenarios. Biggest thing is the amortization of discount on bonds payable. Which again, you just insert it like this. You take your discount. You're going to divide it by in parentheses, a year, so it's a 10 year, times how many payments we make every year, which is two. And that is our amortization each payment, 405. So we're reducing this by 405 each payment. So we're going to take that and add our cash interest. So our total interest expense is 2055 So always remember, you have a discount. Your interest expense will always be greater than your cash. Likewise, if it's a premium, interest expense is always going to be less than your cash. Okay. And what you bet? I knew it. We're going to have a premium next off. So again, same formula, 90,000 times now 1.05, since I sold it at 105. So I sold it for 94,500. Okay. And Cash, bond payable. I think this one's a little bit easier. Don't need to calculate to do the math here for the difference. Because it's going to be 4500 And if it's credit, it's a premium. If it's debit, it's going to be discount. That needs to help out. But again, if I see the number, I know above 100 is a premium. Okay. So, again, we have interest expense, cash, and premium. There we go. We know cash already since we've calculated that interest already. Next is the premium. So, you take how much your premium was, divide by, again, 10 times 2. And our amortization for each year is 225. Remember, it's a debit when it's an interest payment. Because, again, it's a credit to start off. We're lowering it. Cash minus 225 for amortization means my interest expense this time is 2025. 
And that's really it for problem three. Nice. Just journalizing. Hit. Watch out. Don't get caught too much on the amortization. Make sure you definitely follow the formulas. Those are all in your notes. And overall, not bad. Oh, I guess there is one more requirement. Which bond requires results and the most interest expense for stock? Well, they're looking for most interest expense. Well, that was your discount. Uh, discount must be advertised over the life of the bond, resulting in interest expense greater than, there we go. <laughs> that was an easy one. Okay. Ooh, this is fun. Okay, East New Magazine. Issues 500,000 for a 15 year, 7% callable bond. I don't like the sound of callable, but payable on July 31st, 2018 at 97. Okay. On July 31st, 2021, Eastwood calls the bond at 102. Oh, goody. He did end up calling it back. Assume annual interest payments. All right. So without making journal entries, compute the carrying amount of the bond payable at July 31st, 2021. Okay. So the carrying amount of the bond payable at issuance First, carrying value, remember, for discounts, this is a discount, is basically the bond minus unamortized discount. But when we issue, the same as cash. So I can cheat a little bit, 500,000 times 0.91. Or 97, sorry. And the carrying value is 485,000. Okay. The blank on the bond at issuance amounts to the discount on the bond at issuance amounts to 15, yeah, it looks like 15, 25, 15,000. Yeah. So, 15,000. Check. That's what it requires. Okay, so the carrying amount of the bond payable at July 31st, 2021. Okay, they're being simple, they're going three years. Okay, so we have to really figure out our amortization. So, 15,000 divided by 15 years, since we're already doing it annually. So, three years. That's basically 1,000 a year. I'm three. That's three thousand of amortization that we have removed. So that should mean we have twelve thousand left. Basically fifteen thousand minus three thousand. Okay. So that's unamortized. Remember, carrying value is our bond minus unamortized. So if it's only twelve thousand, our carrying value should be four hundred and eighty-eight thousand. Okay. 
biggest thing to watch out is that one, the carry value as the years go is going to be getting closer and closer to 500,000. Okay. Now, this says assume all amortization has been recorded properly. Okay. Generalize the retirement of the bond on July 31st, 2021. No explanation is required. Okay. First off, we have our bond payable. On table will be debited for how much it's worth. So this is retirement. Next, we have discount on bonds payable. Actually, that's going to be credit. We'll see. We may actually have to change up the numbers. So we move the discount. Oh yeah, we got a loss going on. I feel like we got a loss. So, I'm going to put loss on retirement, just be safe, discount, and cash. So they bought back the bond at 102. 500,000 times. 1.02. He basically paid 510,000 to call it back. Okay. So yeah, we've got a lot going on because again, you have a difference happening. So 510,000 plus 12,000 minus 500k. He lost $22,000 on calling this bond back. That's really it for question four. I thought that was going to have more to it. It's a little bit more complicated on um, question four. We may have to go back and probably view this uh, video again as we got recorded. But a little bit more to it. Especially since it's not doing journalization. But what I would probably suggest to help you out is probably journalize just to see the flow of it. But yeah, I'm a little bit tricky going on there. That was interesting. Okay, now what do we got going on? Question five. Orthopedic dispensary borrowed 300000 on January 2nd, 2018, by issuing a 15% serial bond. Oh, now we're doing a serial bond. Oh, Lord. Uh, payable that must be paid in three equal annual installments plus interest for the year. The first payment of the principal and in interest comes due January 2nd, 2019. Complete the missing information. Assuming bonds are issued at base value. Okay. So 2018. Yeah. 300,000. Okay. Interest payable. Right. Trying try to do a little twist here. Okay. That was a little twist. So, three equal, so, 100,000. Right here, current liabilities is what's due within a year. Okay? So, should be 300,000 divided by three, which we have three years. And this is where we find our current. So that means the remaining of the bond is our long term, more than a year. This one's a, a little tricky. They got some tricky problems going on here. I give them credit. Okay, so interest payable is 300000 
times 0.15 as in the bond. We should have about 45,000 for the year. Okay, let's check. There we go. 19. Okay, 19, we paid off the 100. We still have another 100,000. This leaves us with 100,000 for long term. Good. Take this one off. Next time you can do that's how serial works. But now interest should be lower. Should drop down to thirty thousand. Check. Still running strong. And last but not least, the remaining of the bond to do should be nothing less than long term. So, 100,000 times 0.15, we're left with 15,000. Overall, it's interesting that they threw in a serial one, serial bond. At least it wasn't like overly difficult when we had to do premium and discount on it too. That would have sucked. <laughs> Okay. Oh, ratios. Yay. Let's go check notes because I, again, do not remember uh, formulas on ratios off the top of my head. So here we are. So all the way down to the bottom. And we're looking for debt. Total liabilities divided by total equity. Surprisingly, I did not know that. <laughs> total liabilities divided by total equity. There we go. Okay. So, no total equity. Oh, we do not know. History. Okay, we're going to have to do some math here. First off, we know our basic accounting formula is assets equal liabilities uh, plus equity. So first, we have to figure out our assets. So 62,100, that's our current, plus our other, plus our property plan and equipment. Okay, so we have assets totally up. 278,040. Next, we subtract out our liabilities. So this leaves us with only our equity. 132, 400. Our liabilities were 51,670 plus the long term 145,640. I thought that was a fun little twist that they threw in. So just divide. And our debt to equity ratio is 1.1. Or 1.10 if you want to do it exactly like they have it. So the only trick here is finding stockholders equity and remembering accounting equation, which again, assets equal liabilities plus equity. So if we're missing one of those in our addition, we subtract the other from assets. A little bit of algebra. Not the greatest, but a little bit. Okay. Seven. Seven's got five parts. Dang, am I going to make it before 320 and get all the homework done? Let's see. 
Okay, if the market interest rate is 7%, when TCU issues its bonds, will the bond be priced at base value at premium or at discount? And I explain. Okay, so they're going to issue a 8% 20-year bond table with base value of 200000 Now, market interest rate is less than, okay? So that means if our rate, coupon rate, is greater, it's going to be selling at premium, okay? So, they are attractive. And the one pay one face value. Okay. Only time if they're the same as face value and if the market interest rate is greater than our coupon rate, the sale rates are gone. That's when it sells for a discount. So those are ones that you have to watch out. The notes will show. Right now they have an uh, interest rate is 9%. This is selling at discount. These are unattractive in this market because, again, market rate basically giving a higher interest rate. So they want to pay less than base value. Oh, now we get to generalize the bonds. Yay! Okay, so it actually sold. At discount, 98. So remember, we take our bond and multiply it by the at price on the issue. If it's 98, it's 0.98, or the percentage. So 196,000. That's the cash we receive. And again, we credit bonds, 200000 And the difference is going to be our discount. So it's going to be on the debit side. It's less. So give us all the information that's going to be a discount. It's a little bit easier numbers to do in your head than you need the calculator for it. So issue bond at discount. Generalize the payment of interest and amortization on June 30th. Okay, so we've already done some of this. So again, interest expense, discount, and cash. Now, cash payment is always based on the principal, okay? The principal times 0 0.08, and always divide by how many times you're going to pay it. Or I'm going to pay it twice, and my annually. So our cash is 8,000, okay? Now it's time to compute our amortization. So we start off with the discount. Then we're going to divide it by actually get rid of this. There we go. Then divide by how many years? So this is a 20 year bond times how many payments we make each year. Okay? So it's a hundred bucks. Not much. And we're going to credit. Because again, it starts out as a debit, and we're reducing it. So, for me, it's 8100 This is to a semi-annual interest and amortization of discount. Okay. So, generalize the payment of it. Okay. It's cool when it does this. Because once you know you got this one correct, all it is is a repeat. Interest, 
discount, and cash. That's the same numbers. Doesn't change on the interest payments. So, makes life easy. Okay. All right, retirement of bond at maturity. Okay, so when we retire it, best thing is we always debit bond payable and it's cash. There should be no more discount. It is gone. So again, coming for the full amount of the bond, 200000 for me, and we credit 200000 Okay. Oh, I forgot the explanation. I forget that every now and then. There's a retirement up on. Okay. Oh, this is a time value money one. This one we haven't even talked about. This was not supposed to be on here. I don't know why it is this. Okay. Since I'm not able to edit, see what we got going on. Okay, so we're going to determine the present value of a six-year bond payable with base value of 93000 and stated interest rate of 14000 paid semi-annually. The market rate of this interest is 14%. Okay, so we want to find the present value. So we're going to use the basically one of these and when the market rate interest is 14% annually. I remember if this is going to be annuity or not. So first off, periods. Okay, I think this is going to be annuity. And we are having payments. We're going to try this. Okay. So, six years, 14%. I don't think that's going to be it. I was thinking we're doubling the payments. I'm going to try this. Calculate. Times. Table which was point four five six I'm not right. No. Actually for this one, y'all guys just go ahead and just keep doing the final check. Since I can't get rid of it, uh, it's fine. I'll just uh, redo your guys' uh, homework and give you the credit for this one. Okay. Because really this one should be on there. Uh, I'll see if I can remove it real quick. Okay. Because really you don't need it. We're not going to go over it. That's fine. This is more of a managerial item anyway. So that concludes uh, for the homework videos.